I always get so many questions along the lines of the same topic. Ellis, how do you make money from football shirts? Or Ellis, can you make money from football shirts? Well, welcome to today's video. The short answer is yes, you can make money from football shirts. The long answer is a lot more confusing and a bit more detailed than that. So we're going to cover both today. Strap yourselves in. Let's go. It's not a roller coaster. So, Sam, can you edit me on a roller coaster right now? Just here I am. Woohoo! <laughs> Before we get any further, play the trailer. <laughs> Aware some of you might be getting sick of the trailer by this point, all you need to know is Away Day shirts on sale now in the description. Every single size possible is covered. Worldwide shipping is available. Don't miss out. Link is in the description. Let's get into today's video. Just to be clear before we proceed, I'm a collector of shirts. I think sometimes people get confused and think that I am a reseller. I think maybe because of the way I positioned the older mystery boxes and football shirt hunting, people think I'm always looking to sell stuff on that I get. And the reality of it is I am just a collector. I'll sell stuff from the mystery boxes to try and break even, but at my heart of this whole thing, I'm a collector. Oh, look at that. I'm showing off the messy shirts. <laughs> On that note of me being a YouTuber, actually, it means that when I go to sell my shirts, I have an audience to push them to and showcase the shirts to. Not everyone has that. So if I was to become like a reseller, I would be in a much healthier position than a lot of people due to me already having an audience there initially. Like most people that get into reselling have to start from scratch. And this is something we'll talk about as we get on. But basically, my scenario of selling shirts is a lot different to a lot of people. Also, speaking of my shirts, you guys always ask, Ellis, how much is your shirt collection actually worth? If you guys hit 1,500 likes on this video, next week we'll have a video up where I talk about the value of my shirt collection at this current point. Let's start with the obvious, buying and selling football shirts on for profit. I know it's not something that collectors such as myself are overly keen on due to the fact that it makes the prices for the market go up and it makes it harder to obtain shirts in the long run because the prices go up and genuine collectors are being beaten to shirts by people who are looking to flip them for profit. But then obviously the flip side from that is people who have a collection of shirts as the market goes up their collection in value will also go up as well. However, this can be done for short term gain. Sites like eBay, Gumtree, Facebook Marketplace, places physically like charity shops, secondhand stores, car boot sales are all great places to pick up shirts incredibly cheap and then These places are great places to pick up shirts cheap. Obviously, you can then do what you want with them, but if you're looking to make profit, this is a place where stock can be sourced. However, please bear in mind, when you're starting from scratch with zero followers, it is incredibly tough to start yourself up as a new business, especially in the football shirt space, where there are so many amazing sellers already. Like, I've made a video on this before, and like how to start a football shirt collection. There are so many amazing sellers in this community already, so you're gonna find it tough. There's also a lot that is involved with it, photoing shirts, ensuring your shirts are properly stored, ensuring that the listings are correct, ensuring that every shirt you have is genuinely legit, because if you sell one fake, that's it. Your reputation is damaged massively. You need to, as a seller, be the knowledgeable and the person that is on the ball when it comes in regards to your shirts. Just realized I went, you need to be the knowledgeable. What does that mean? Ellis, you idiot. 
So I guess my answer in regards to starting from scratch is you can make money in the long run, but it's an incredibly long and tedious process and there's just definitely better ways to invest your money, I'd probably say. If you're looking at it purely from a financial or business standpoint, you're probably best just invest in some shares or something. I don't know, just not fabric. <laughs> Investing is where I think there is money to be made long term. As you've seen with the football shirt market, it has risen ridiculously, mainly from like 2015 onwards. It's exploded heavily in 2020. And I think maybe there will be a point where it stabilizes a tiny bit. But I think in regards to long term, the market is only going to continue to rise. And I think everyone in the space kind of knows that. Some people are pretending they didn't know the market was going to rise, even though they're part of the reason the market has risen. You naughty naughty. <laughs> you teasing me. Anyway, there is two sides to this. There's a side that think the shirt market is going to collapse and prices will return to like really cheap amounts. And then there's the side that I... Ah, we're funny bro. And then there's the side of the fence that I sit on, which only sees the shirt market going up. Specifically, the retro shirt market. My reasoning for this is, as the years continue to go on, especially from the 90s, where now some of the shirts from the 90s are gonna be 30 years old already. They're gonna be harder and harder to obtain. And as more and more of them continue to get a little bit of damage on them, continue to get a few tears, the more people wear them out and about, the more people wear their Euro 96 England shirt to events like this, and then this happens. That is actually a very good example. Retro England shirts are ones that probably get ruined more than other shirts due to the way that we celebrate goals and the people wear them quite a lot in terms of like when a tournament comes round. If it's covered in dark fruits, that's another mint condition shirt off the market. So therefore, the price of the mint condition ones that are still there are going to be more desirable and the value for them is going to go up. So essentially, my opinion is the retro market is going to continue to rise because shirts are only getting rarer. They're only going to be harder to find in mint condition. And in turn, I think long term, the retro market will steadily rise. So investing in shirts, something to consider straight away is this is not financial advice. This is purely me just saying what I think is going to happen with the shirt market. What I think the best way to invest in shirts, if you can afford to do so, it's just all my opinion. Every bit of this is my opinion and my opinion usually is wrong <laughs> also as i just said if you're going to be doing this only ever spend what you can afford i know it's obvious i know i always say it but it needs to be reiterated do not put yourself in financial difficulty over buying some football shirts like there's better things you can spend your money on these should be either seen as something you get on top of your regular thing you shouldn't basically be moving your finances around to accommodate shirts let idiots like me do that. Right, so say you're investing right now for the next five to 10 years, what should you invest in, in my opinion? One huge tip I have is name sets and player names. Shirts with iconic player names on the back will always be more desirable and more valuable than the base shirt itself. See some of these examples on screen right now from classic football shirts. Even with some more modern shirts, we're already seeing this, like an Mbappe Monaco shirt. I saw one sell for £200 the other month. That shirt was from 2015. £200 just because it had Mbappe's name on the back. That is mental. However, with player names, in the moment, it's often hard to tell which player is going to go on to have an iconic career and the name set will be more desirable. I would say this is down to like almost a risk and reward. If you look at, for example, if you were to get a mold shirt with Haaland on the back, I've never seen one for sale, but there will be ones in existence. So if you were to have a Haaland mold shirt when he was still a wonder kid, he wasn't really breaking any records or anything when he was at mold, but he was still a talent. If you'd have invested in that shirt then, you'd have done very well for yourself. So I think the best way I would say in terms of risk and reward is trying to find wonder kids, maybe investing in their shirts. Once again, not financial advice. This is just my opinion on the topic. But if you can find Wonder Kids maybe at more obscure clubs who will then you predict to go on to greatness, then maybe that is a great way to try and play the game a bit in terms of risk and reward in thinking, ah, oh, that guy might have a great career. Let's invest in that. But the thing of Wonder Kids, for every one Erling Haaland, there's about 50 Wonder Kids that either don't go on to have a great career at all or they become mediocre and not iconic. 
a player off the top of my head. I remember there was a lot of hype about Sebastian Driussi from the Argentinian League a few years ago. He then moved to Zenit St. Petersburg and I haven't heard anything from him since. So it's players like that where you may have bought his shirt and thought, oh, he's going to have a great career. There's obviously two right now who are pretty safe bets in Haaland and Mbappe. So if I was to suggest you investing in anyone in this current crop of players, I think you could probably safely say they're the two that for the next decade, it seems to be them. There is a lot of factors for this as well, however. So I'm not saying specifically only buy shirts of Wonder Kids on the back, because like I said, a lot of the time it won't work out. But if you have a real life of talent and you back yourself and you see a player like Haaland at an obscure club who you're like, Jesus, then you would have done really well. And there's two obvious players for this generation in terms of who you should be looking to get names of and if you were looking to invest, that is. And it's obviously Haaland and Mbappe. I'm aware me telling you to invest means more people will do it and make them less desirable. So maybe don't. <laughs> Your bankers, though, are iconic players. Iconic players that whose names you know are going to be spoken about for decades. There's even some that are great examples right now from the 90s. People still bang on about Del Piero. People still talk about Maldini. People still talk about Nesta. People always talk about Batistuta. There are so many players from the 90s like Gascoigne that people still talk about now and will continue to do so. So therefore, their shirts are more valuable than, you know, say, who is another player who played for a team who I'm definitely going to sit here and think about and not get. Players that did mediocre aren't as, as desirable is the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> as I said, iconic players are your bankers. There's two obvious ones right now who are coming to the end of their careers. Can you think of them? Pablo Hernandez and Matej Klik. Of course, two of the most iconic football players of all time, Messi, that's Iniesta, not Ronaldo. But he's also iconic. What a bloody player. It does amaze me that Ronaldo is 36, has children, and we all just allow him to go Hoo! every time he scores a goal. Why do we not call him out for that? That is ridiculous. Ibrahimovic gets to call himself a lion and a god. Could you imagine if I started doing that? You'd think, what? <laughs> but anyway, we're obviously going to be talking about players like Messi, Ronaldo, Iniesta, Xavi, Modric, Sergio Ramos. Players like that. They're going to be talked about for decades upon decades. And as people get older, as people get nostalgic looking back at these players, especially Messi and Ronaldo, because they're just freaks of nature who, in my opinion, we're not going to see a duo like that for ages. I know people say Haaland and Mbappe, but they're going to reach great levels, but they're not going to reach the levels of these two men. We're so blessed to have seen Messi and Ronaldo, and it's mental that it was in the same era as well. Like, absolutely mind-blowing. But anyway, as decades go on and people like myself get older, we are going to look back on players like Messi and Ronaldo with more nostalgia, which makes their shirts more desirable, it makes people like me want their shirts, so therefore the market for them goes up, the prices of the shirts go up too. It's simple and I think that's something that is very obviously going to happen. The same can obviously be said for club legends like Gerrard, Lampard, Scholes, players like that, their shirts are always going to be more desirable too. These are more desirable for obvious reasons, fans of clubs are always going to have sentimental feelings towards their favourite players when they were growing up. And these players like Gerard and Lampard especially, who have only just recently retired, their shirts aren't going to have rocketed too much at this current point. But I reckon if you look back in five or ten years time from now, if anyone's watching this five years in the future, did I still do YouTube? I doubt it. I, I don't know what I'm doing in five years. If I'm still on YouTube, pff, something's gone well. In all seriousness, if you look in five or ten years time, you will not be able to pick up a Gerard or Lampard shirt for around 30 to 40 quid. It just, it's not gonna be the case. Also, I know it sounds obvious, but the crazy designs and the designs from title winning or like Champions League, FA Cup winning seasons, they're always the most desirable shirts for fans because they either look back nostalgically on the way the team performed and they wanna have the shirt associated with that run, or two, the shirt design is so mental that it's so out there compared to everything else the club has that the value for that goes up too. See, for example, the bruised banana. See, for example, the Norwich kit that looks like bird shit. Stuff like that always becomes more desirable. Two obvious things if you look at this from a purely financial aspect. Thing one, never get your own name 
or a family member's name on the back of a shirt if you wanted to get it purely for the monetary value. Obviously, of your own name on it, a family member's name for like a marquee birthday or something, that holds sentimental value, but it's specific to only you or your family member. If you're looking to invest purely for financial reasons, then get like either a player name on the back or just don't get any name. But like I'm saying, purely for a financial aspect, invest not in your own name on the back because you'll get stuck with Sternalov, Harry, Kniv, Shahid. They're, they're my classics. And I know some of you are going to hate me for saying it, but you know it's coming. Fakes do not hold their value in the long term. If you buy a fake shirt, you're not going to be able to resell it for anything. So just bear that in mind if you're someone who is looking to collect fakes for the future. No one's going to want them. We don't want your dirty fakes. So there are my thoughts and feelings on this topic. I'm aware that it's really one of them things that if you're really good at it, you can probably do really well. Uh, and you're not, you won't do well. My opinion is basically short term. I think you'll find it very hard due to the fact that there's so many amazing established sellers in this space. That's not at all to say you shouldn't give it a crack if it's something you're looking to do. I'm just saying financially, it'd probably be wiser to try and look to invest your money in something else. On the other side from that though, long term, I think there is great potential in investing in shirts. We've seen it already happen over the last 30, 20, 10 years. The secondhand shirt market is real. And in my opinion, it's only going to continue to grow. So getting involved now, I think in my personal opinion, remember it's not financial advice. I think it's a smart thing to do. And if you can pick up a shirt or two every month to add to your collection and maybe look to keep for five or 10 years, maybe you don't want to sell shirts at all. But the point of this video is if you're looking to sell, then your shirts will be worth more in five or 10 years, usually. My reasoning that I don't think the shirt market will dip anytime soon is a vape it shirt now is now 90 quid recommended retail price. So you're gonna buy, you can buy a new shirt, which is mass produced for 90 quid. And I'm aware the retro shirts were also mass produced, but they're much harder to come by in mint condition. But you can find some shirts from the 90s easily for around 90 pound. So that obviously, I feel like the desirable option at this moment is the retro shirts. And as more of them get eaten up, the market is going to continue to rise. And I do think it will rise more steadily. I think 2020 has been a huge spike due to several factors. Um, people making more video content on the topic probably didn't help the, the prices of them. Them dicks. Anyway, if we hit 1,500 likes in this video, I will do a video telling you how much my football shirt collection is worth. We'll get it all out. We'll value it. That'll be a fun four days of my life. Remember, away day shirts are only on sale for under two weeks now. They're in the description. Be sure to check them out because when they're gone, they genuinely are gone. Be sure to comment your thoughts in this video. Where do you think the football shirt market will be in five or ten years? What do you think are my opinions on this? What do you think the best way to invest in shirts is? Be sure to let me know in the comments. I've been Ellis. Be sure to subscribe for more football shirt content. It's usually fun, not informative. Sometimes we fuse the two, sometimes we don't. Ciao, ciao. Bye.